at the beginning, I will just explain what is this, let's say, video illustration documentation, which will autonom autonomously go without our interruption, what it represents and what it shows. So um, just this first, uh, it, but let's say that it shows um, three ways of working uh, with, uh, not just, uh, of working with the archive. Uh, I would use contemporary term, um, autonomous archiving, which is now very much, uh, which is prominent also in uh, film and visual arts, um, to, to somehow uh, say how it was part of Indus practices from, uh, from naturally, let's say, intuitively from the beginning. We will show one, uh, you will be able to see one, uh, one uh, few, um, few shots which are uh, looped uh, from, the, from the performance uh, horse tail. But what is uh, important with this, uh, among other things, uh, performance was that it was uh, reconstruction and sort of a remake with other performers. So in a way, even reenactment for the purpose to, uh, to be documented. So it's kind of video performance. It, we, can, we can talk about this, about uh, video performance for the audience and of course for the camera. So it's a very uh, interesting, uh, uh, you know, example of th this practice which nowadays would be called uh, self-documentation of the artist. But, uh, but I like very much this autonomous uh, archiving concept because it, it, has, uh, it, it has some resistance in it because it's uh, against uh, so-called colonial practices of the big archives. And the, the, let's say the motto of it, it's uh, don't wait for the archive. So uh, I, I think that Indus somehow started this uh, naturally, wanted to document his practice and to keep the record of his practice. And we, we all know, Cliff can say also that Indus is, uh, you know, document, documenting everything. So uh, many of these, these things, of course, don't survive or, but, uh, and, and they change in migrations that are lost in some way. So this is one practice. After that, we have some examples of the really great uh, work which we did with Cliff. We did it, uh, which, which was documentation, but let's say of sort of, uh, it was like a sort of um, building the archive of Para Institute Indus of uh, certain gestures, work, work with the instruments, we did it with the cliff and also with the photographer, cinematographer, great uh, cinematographer, Miran Kerchadinas. So you will see example of these things that we started to do actually during the lockdown. And uh, also this material is supposed to be used for, let's say, uh, other rem remediations. And cliff did it with us. So in a way, very intervening with this sampling, working with these materials in autonomous way. Uh, and uh, the third part, somehow uh, it's uh, like the, let's say the glimpse of it is this cabin at the beginning, which also was shot by Miran Kerchadinac. And it's uh, in the third stream of thinking about, uh, not just about the sound and the instruments, but the really about the, theater and performance and the presence of both, uh, let's say it's, a, uh, uh, it's about certain disruption, which separates the, both the, the bodies and sounds from the, from the performers, but also from the instruments. So he likes to use the term tensorized instruments. So this is an example of a trombone, which is, arm, which is pencilized. And also that cabin, it's a sort of also pencilized in instrument for two performers. So, and the, 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 so we are now coming to the third situation, uh, which you will see the, as I said, sort of glimpse of it at the end of this uh, clip, 
um, with our work with the surveillance cameras inside the cabin. So for the for the image for the for the audience, which is of course outside. Uh, so that it, uh, but it's also because there are you know four cameras, the the vision and uh, let's say uh, there is certain vertigo produced within these uh, movements and the uh, work of the autonomous work of camera. And uh, the let's say the thir third practice of this strange archiving would be uh, the our next project. Not, but the next next future project, which is to pencilize the whole para institute in the, you know, in a way to ground the instruments, to put it on walls, certain instruments, mm -hmm. and to make the whole uh, the like extreme para institute, extreme shaft upon para institute in the, like extreme cabin, which could be differently worked uh, from inside let's say, for a different kind of uh, performers and those also visual artists. But uh, I like also the idea that this somehow is related to the workers' gesture, because the workers from the factory unity, uh, Yedinsko, but from the, the main uh, unity of Yedinsko, they at one point in 2000 decided to protect their machines by grounded them on floor, on floor. So they, they, they uh, to so that uh, nobody could, but it was obviously taken from them. But uh, so they grounded really workers. So it was a strike for the work, uh, and the strike for the machines. So while somebody worked, I talked. To <laughs> no, we can. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. We are located in the former tool room of the factory unity, a small production facility of the Dinsko factory along the bank of River Sava at the Par Institute English, a workshop and repository for the extreme musical theater instruments, Shaktofons. Heavy steel objects and machines are piled on top of each other in two connected rooms from walls to ceilings. Access to sharp objects on the narrow ground is difficult. The instruments are not visible at once. They have to be unfolded and pulled out. So you see here pointed surfaces, then, uh, I don't know, wheel stands, which uh, spring forth, internal bars stick out, mm -hmm. external ribs protrude, raw edges of metal machinery, and so on. In the depository, the bodies of the first instruments of spiritual recycling based composed of discard industrial and military elements are placed next to shaktofon cabinets and cabins made of new material, metal sound boxes in which there are springs and which can be assessed by opening the shaktofon covers. The instruments are poor. They have no permanent form or role. Iron objects are often cut, recut, upgraded, pencilized. Each instrument is, has its own graphic score. Each performance has its own vocal and gestural score. There are much more scores than visible instruments. Of some instruments, only scores remain. So what remains for the shaktophonist? and shaktophones. We call this sound class pencilist prototype, this pencilized trombone that reduces artistic movement of the body and sound of the instrument and performance. It preserves the instrument from deterioration, its original shape and source of sound, its and visible mouthpiece.
we will make uh, two circuits, let's say, uh, working sound, but not, not just sound, also bodily and theatrical circuits. One is related to mat with, with materials, with two sound texts, which are on the telephone answering machine tapes. Voice recordings at one uh, one uh, telephone answering machine. It's a voice recording of Shakt upon manifesto. And at the other is a cell partiture, the bullen, together with. Uh, Wise noise, crackle, scratches, samples, and loops of sound instruments, zoomers, amplified with reflectophones. Partiture connects two texts by Ulrike Meinko, written before and after her imprisonment. Radical militant protest manifesto, Die Bullen, published in Spiegel in 1970, and her letter on the necropolitics inscribed two years later. So we have two texts. In one uh, answering machine is this Shakti for Manifesto, and the other is this uh, text written by Ulrike Meinkov before the prison. But uh, we, uh, we superimpose, perform, per, as we are perform the affect of sensory deprivation documented in her other text, in the letter from the prison, from isolation wing, feeling of unbearable sound sibilance, cutting into syntax out of control. Part connects two texts by Ulrike Michael, written before and after her imprisonment. Radical militant protest manifesto, the bullet published in Spiegel in the 70s, and uh, her letter on the necropolitics inscribed two years later. <laughs> So we will now move to the second circuit. Um, from the sound of the springs, which are on magnetophone, recorded on the magnetophone, and which we manipulate the speed. Uh, yeah, great. And uh, Agatha will, uh, so, and you have this antiphone headphones, which are protection against uh, the noise. And you can use it if you want. So we have the second triangular connection between main shaktoponis animal shaktophone and unlearning shaktophony 
as the reverse sound production circuit. It begins with the Revox magnetocontape, with the recorded and manipulated sound of Shaftophone's metal springs, to the amplifier for antiphone headphones, no noise cancelling headphones with cables that reach the listeners and the real shark upon the so the source is actually here uh, so uh, this shark upon the instrument is uh, the the box with the springs we will play shark upon live and the replay in form of sound palindromy through the reflectophone below that samples the sound of live springs. Reflectophones in megaphones in their live house in play with great sound and voice through their megaphone microphone. Reflectophones contain 10 seconds recorded loops of sound samples. So we will perform this per partiture there on the shaktophone. And the partiture, uh, the, the, it's a, uh, Paradigmatic palindrome. It's uh, it's in viru minus nocte consumim igni, and it's from the film and text by Guy Debord. And uh, uh, so we turn in the night and are consumed by fire. So it's uh, it takes over his politics of essential palindromy, strategies of repetition and stoppage with his axiom a posteriori in the place of end, this sentence, uh, which comes to the end, to be taken up again from the beginning. E, e, e. rum, rum. Consuming 
Да, но видите. Da vidite kako su te, znači to je tekst, jedan tekst taj Bibulan, koji je po principu the one Aha, so it's so you see that is uh, maybe we can show it huh? this way yes this way is it visible probably maybe we can unshare screen now ah uh, yeah yeah maybe yeah Yes, this is one of the partitur. Yeah, the first is... idea of this partitur was this will be for Tartufo, and uh, but we now change for Zoom for this partitur, <laughs> and this uh, for, for you, <laughs> and this is for uh, this is that what we perform there. There is originally for Shark for a big level Shark. What I mean, because each spring has uh, own color. We have four springs, red, uh, blue, yellow, and green. And here we put, uh, can we play uh, with power of spring or, or gently, and how long is the duration of the sound of springs? And between is a break with the rhythm. So uh, that's the reason how we know who play and when. And so in the, in the explain why it's visible here. So what what are these triangles? And uh, uh, if it's triangle up, then we we play power. If it's down, we play gently, and we go in the same way with the voice on, on this. And here we connected the word. Then we made this uh, losing of syntax uh, about which we talk in Ulrike Michael case. Uh, then we we connected. Word, for example, in Giru Mimus no Ted Kuzumi Murigni. In Giru Mimus no Ted Kuzumi Murigni. And that's it. How we, it's a, one older part, it should be, yeah. uh, we develop this idea. So in this, um, let's say, Shaktofon Manifesto, which is recorded, it says we are do doing production circle of triangle connections between men Shaktofonists. Animal shaktophone and unlearning shaktophony. So, uh, and um, shaktophone music forms an extreme extended brain that is not only in our head, but in every part of our body. 
that the hands and feet have their own non-essential intelligence and that all these non-essential intelligences contribute to the apparent essential intelligence. Intelligence, intelligence is all around in our body. They transfer like a character fragment about spirit when you have a pain in the knee, immediately the your soul run on this place to to detect or to support your body on the displays where you have pain. We use that when we talk, we, we play with all body instruments. It's very important this gesture, how we play. We must play with, with, with foot, with finger, with shoulder. Can we maybe open the floor? I mean, uh, is there any question? Okay. Um, I have questions for all three. Yeah, of course. If I can start with the last, the last one. Um, it, it's, it's quite ironic. The first time 12 years ago in Mochwara, I saw uh, the English Institute playing, and it was, um, I, I, it, it struck me as something uh, genius that uh, fortunately exists in Croatia. So thank you very much for your existence and your work. It's very important, especially for people who don't, uh, they cannot fathom the, 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 the mainstream underground, but the true to underground. I, I have one question because this is the first time I got so close enough to actually <laughs> see the working. And I saw something um, that uh, is quite interesting because in graphic notations, usually when there is a rhythm instruction, um, it's, it's very, very hard to discern. Uh, but um, I, I saw you uh, uh, tap. Uh, uh, in the rhythm of the four three, mm -hmm. yeah. So I just wanted to know how uh, how do you conceive of rhythm, especially within this layered structure of body movement, uh, movement of history, movement of material, sound, etc. How do you think about rhythm as as such? Does it come? In the beginning, or is it just a byproduct, or, or you do something else with it? Also, um, how do you, as 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 a theoretician, then uh, uh, generally um, say it in English? Uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, you use, yeah. But how do you use this knowledge of of a rhythmic structuring of everything, history, sound, movement, etc. Through the body? No, no, but, <laughs> no, 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 but okay, it's, uh, I believe, it's uh, more complicated. Uh, <laughs> I believe in uh, one million repetition of my passion to to build the structure and to support idea who stay which stay behind this text or behind this what's happened in uh, real life and. Uh, I uh, use the rhythm only uh, like uh, like a worker, not like a musician. I work uh, for one idea, how I call it, marital steam. What I saw or where I was a part of something, what's happened, and and I never in that moment I never think. That's I will use for the, my artistic work. Maybe this happened six or ten years after. In that moment, I said, "Now it's time to use this merit to stem and support with this uh, repetition of passion or passion or repetitions." And it's not. I am not uh, connected. I, I think I said we unlearning uh, from the. Uh, classical idea about uh, music uh, and rhythm in music. And we, we, that's the reason why we build these instruments and why I don't learn uh, uh, piano or something. And that's the reason why I use trombone this way. I don't want to use like a, a musician this trombone. I, I use this from uh, some strange work uh, it's a work art error 
<laughs> yeah, book art air, yeah. Not uh, like a, a artist who study or finish it who can love for the music and learn about music. But uh, I can maybe say something uh, which is like really, really part of the practice that uh, all this partiture came from the I'm not talking about the behind the reasons and so on, but they came from the text. And uh, so it's really a uh, letterist approach. You know, the, the counting the, the letters in one word, make, making, so it's a structural letterist approach, um, which is not, you know, every, every text has its own law. So it's kind of going deeply in the letters and the different sorts of meanings and, and combinations, like really going deeply uh, into the text, but not in a classical way. Um, uh, so it's uh, like going into the structure of the text. Yeah, no, you, the real life drama in this, in view, Minus Noctet, which uh, the Deborah Situationist uses behind this day, is they really uh, walk, walking five or six days. So, day and night without uh, any hour of sleep and uh, the result can be very dangerous and was very dangerous for many of them especially for Ivan Chegrov for example and if we know why they why they use this passion for this for nothing <laughs> why they must go to the madness uh, on this way. Yeah. Sorry, could, could you explain again the origin of that text you're talking about? So it's a film, uh, actually, so it came from the Situationists, uh -huh. from Guy Debord. It's a, it's a great film, which was kind of uh, the end of uh, the, the, the last, about the, the how avant-garde has its, uh, its own, only one time. And it needs to be destroyed. Or, okay. So it's uh, this film is uh, based. It's actually the board made uh, films in which he uh, used used material. So it's mm -hmm. like uh, for uh, it's a found footage uh -huh. idea. Exactly. Yes, but uh, in this film, in in Girminus Noctet Consuming Morigni, he uh, shot more material than. Than than ever, so it's uh, so it was uh, not just with the used films, uh, used materials, pre and uh, so we used just this palindrome. Mm -hmm. So and because it's kind of uh, the whole his work is about repetition and stoppage. And the uh, right, uh, yellow, uh, green, blue, and then go back again from blue, uh, uh, yellow. Uh, Blue, blue red, the, the, come to red, and from the red again back, yeah. and that's the how we go to the to the partition. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can continue. Uh, with what does your? I would like to know the difference between you two uh, in regards to the interpretation of the uh, situation, uh, the yeah. uh, subversive or. Uh, the, the pragmatic power of situations theory, I guess, the bottom, maybe, yeah. especially in your work with workers. Uh, as in this regard, I would like you to talk about uh, the lowering or the grounding of your future project. Mm. project offer, right? So, how does that differ? Because I have a feeling it's, it's a, there is a kind of a difference. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we are coming from the different, uh, you know, different points of the entry. Let's say I came. From the let's okay. say, academy, from from the acting. Uh, like if only the band and scene, like also group sex at the Obits of Recruitment, and painting yeah, gallery, so. etc. And Google Lumish then. But uh, we saw how we can turn uh, this way. How Slavko Boric Kitcher came from this, and now he came in, uh, he's on the top <laughs> on the European film or actors. That, that the I uh, I want to say that it's also possible, but for me I think I, I is not necessary. How Cliff said, there is not for me it's not necessary to go 
on this way. And I, I don't use when I when somebody won't talk with me and won't take me in this way, I, I know it's not that is not necessary for me. Yeah. But I will really maybe in a way answer to the question of, from my point of view, what Cliff mentioned about this use of the uh, technology, let's say in the theater. Our case is that we both from the different sides are very much, uh, you know, influenced uh, with the with the media, with the with the but let's say media theater. But in our case, it's a poor media theater. So it's uh, like uh, uh, distract, uh, de deconstructing the the media theater. So it's not. Uh, we cannot do, or we are not uh, equipped, or to do like booster theater performances. But we really adore it. You know, we are. Th th this is this sort of uh, media theater is something that uh, we are doing in a. Let's say it's really good to think about. You know, poor media the theater. So mm -hmm. it's a. Uh, but I think it shows what technology is. It's not about the technique. Yes. It's about what what you do with things. Everything can be yeah. Funny. I mean, a piece of yeah, it's a, in your case, it's really everything. It's like a piece of whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are so many, so many theories around. You know, like uh, artists as a metallurgist. You know, there are so many these theories. But uh, I would maybe mention uh, the 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 artist and theorist uh, Kojo Eshu. Uh, who in the, his book, More Brilliant Than Sun, uh, wrote uh, some things that are very, very important for us, but also in other works that he is doing. But he mentioned how the connection between, like this sensory media connection uh, could lead to some, uh, you know, hyper embodiment. So it's kind of a completely different thing. So we are really, uh, for us, is the bodily important to be, in connection with these things, and uh, and it, it, and but uh, what I like so much that it creates uh, sort of detachment. So it's a natural uh, detachment uh, produced with this contact, uh, and uh, but also detachment which is necessary for the theater. So we have uh, you know uh, voices separated from our bodies. So it's like acousmatic situation. So we we work very much with this this embodiment, let's say. But uh, the the idea is to produce, let's say, or to the feeling of hyper embodiment, let's say. Uh, so it's not about, yeah. So maybe uh, yeah, I was sorry. Yes, but I also wanted to. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 the right word is for, for really interested in schools because of all these things we do them we, we change the function mm -hmm. of some things, but it's always the, the also reducing I was talking about all the problem of like mm -hmm. we always have huge lot of problems with technology during the performance also, but that's the part of the yeah. so it's kind of um, especially because I work with you, so I know you. Mm -hmm. But like very often, like, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, but that, yeah. Cool. and that's kind of that's part of the whole. With this, it's part of the whole thing that it's also the, the tools in your troubles, and also break the concentration of the performance mm -hmm. and to get back. And it's, it's constant relationship with these uh, machines, be it uh, electrical machines or mechanical, or just like mm -hmm. things. With, uh, which can simply be displaced and we're in the wrong place and there is uh, always a moment of panic. That's yeah. kind of, um, uh, I believe that's an kind of integral part of uh, working with un uncomfortable situations like uh, like not putting yourself in perfect environment but in an environment that is wild and then like we constantly slide, struggle to work with. Uh, with. With your work I, I find always this, this struggle with too many things are like 
too much uh, uh, too much too much production uh, possibilities, mm -hmm. which is kind of uh, for one time it's it's a style, it's kind of I mean we cannot be and talking about uh, the, the tools like the uh, uh Dan mentioned this project of I don't know what it's called recording the mm -hmm. individual elements, the, the idea came from the fact that I realized that I feel when we first looked, and you know, because then we are frozen, some things like I'm developing those, uh, uh, we can pick up some on, on, uh, on machines or whatever to hear them better. And, but like uh, the, during the performance, it's like there is lots of noise, there's only lots of things going on there. Like usually, two or three things happen simultaneously. So it's very diff difficult to understand. How what's the relationship with the single tool, with the mm -hmm. single object? So especially during our first two sessions, I tried really hard to, to, to push English and Tanya not to do performance, to slowly and like um, uh, with some concentration, but do single things, on, which is very difficult because they don't usually do it. But uh, I think it, and you also mm -hmm. mentioned samples. There was also one little work that I made from those materials, like yeah. putting them together. Um, although I must say, it's always difficult because the further we went with this project, the further it was becoming actually a performance. <laughs> like the, the same moment you put them off the leash, like <laughs> there they are, they bring the, the putting many elements together. And uh, and well, that's it. I think it's a uh, natural situation that like, you you cannot help yourself. It's always like you the most of passion, and uh, uh, there is no actually there is no rehearsal. It's all it's either performance or it's nothing. So, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the very specific things you do is that actually you don't know what are you doing in terms of the whole show. Because we don't never see it, you know, we get your head in the dark of home and we, like you know who invite. It's a very specific way of working because like you, you but by definition you cannot have on, on either you directing in the classical ways to put for people to discuss the concept, but then each member is more or less doing what he does, and uh, there are really uh, problems about like what somebody does, it's always like it's always fine to, to do it with new people in the show. But um, yeah, and I, I didn't mean to say anything bad about this, but it's, uh, it's uh, all or nothing. Uh, and uh, I never saw you, you know, maybe you can see the recording, of course, after, but you don't know what, what other people are doing to show you. You hear something, you see something, but you're always in your um, <laughs> What you're saying reminds me of um, this book, The uh, Blind Horseman by Hannah Gerber. Uh -huh. So she learned Haitian voodoo mm -hmm. in order to better document it. But then sometimes when a ritual would come up, you know, the time for the ritual was there, she's got her camera set up and you think the practitioner. You're like, <laughs> oh, you get it. Like, you know, uh, overtaken right by the law. But I never before, I, I first saw your work, I think in the early 2000s when I first started working here and some of Anish was performing in something at Sudetsky's Mecca. And you had these old films of students from the non aligned days. Mm -hmm. Zelen or Zelen. Yeah. Like green, like, green. It was great. It was a huge job. Yeah. Project. I didn't know what the hell you were talking about. My language skills were really low, plus it was loud. But the, the energy was stunning. Yeah, yeah. Also, that it, very much. You chose that material for that place and the history of that. Yeah, place. it was site specific. Yeah. So I, I understood that and it opened up that piece of history and, and reality of the site where I was also working for me. Now that I hear you talk about it, I see it's really kind of um, all chemical in the meaning of transformational. You're transforming mm -hmm. the the text, the ideas in the text you work with that you're passionate about into this fully embodied, um, but emptied out by undoing act. Mm -hmm. And that somehow releases a huge amount of energy. And it's not just oral vibrational energy. It's 
it, it's through the maybe ritualistic way in which you approach it that you're looking for this unleashing of the meaning of the text that you think is so important because it's a value system, it's a belief system, and that's actually anchored in the materiality of what you handle, of the tools that you handle. So uh, thanks a lot for this. Uh, I thought the elements. It made me wonder, um, Cliff, like I wanted to ask you earlier, why do you love feedback so much? And do you ever think about using only old equipment? Mm -hmm. well, I did use some um, old equipment. I mean, it's a uh, kind of uh, you know, not good enough fence. So the technology is two years to move more things to especially the feedbacks. Mm -hmm. I started using these sorts of cameras mm -hmm. uh, because then I can move three of them instead of one to scan it and also move them in different way. Uh, but feedback is great. Basically, what feedback in general does is that we show you the, the the, 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 the borders of the system kind of computer feedback, uh, how it works has to do with like size of pixel. Uh, uh, with, with some, for example, with sound feedback, why do log bands sound good? Because the amplifier, while feedbacking, automatically gets the acoustics of the space into the sound. Mm -hmm. That's why the sound is so cold, but it's the, the room, so the same with. Some sort of video feedback that basically it has to do with the system that that constitutes it. So if you do it well, which I think I do with this multi mode feedback with multiple cameras, then uh, it's alive by itself. I mean, there is no computer in it, which people always find fascinating because it looks like computer generated mm -hmm. imagery, and basically there is no rendering, there is no. Uh, uh, yeah, do people think that? Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. Because it's complex. It's like okay. it's big because they made up the system with many projectors and a few cameras. But basically, you can, uh, I can, it, it grows, it can grow. I can just add projectors and cameras without much problem. Mm -hmm. So it's sizable and um, it's always depending on, on life and many things. But it's, uh, uh, it's some of everything. It's temperamental. It kind of, Cannot get uh, something to tame it and to take care of how it works. But uh, I, I mean, in general, feedback techniques are very rewarding because they're generative and they always, I mean, you always have some system, mechanical, uh, electrical, or optical, or whatever. But then within that system, when you have what you have, the simplest, uh, I mean, I don't know. Good examples. I don't know the name. It's Dutch artist. I've seen his work twice, and unfortunately, I don't know the name. He's master of people. And one of his installations I saw in Maribor was the metal plate hanging on the ceiling with microphone in front and uh, um, uh, 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 guitar amplifier on the bottom, and it was feedback. This is old piece. Really old piece. It's right? like. It's yeah, a swinging microphone. Yeah, also, you were doing it. I don't want to say, but you don't want to do it. So, when you come in front of the, the, the plate, you form the sound with the movement, which is amazing. And I, I tried uh, playing with that, and like with Astro, you know, with Alex, and the other man to play, made this crucial, but it's kind of because it's magic and it's just happening, you know, maybe the best. Uh, maybe my love for it started with like a uh, kid, like taking the microphone and the tape machine, and just realizing that you can do it. And now you have synthesizers, you have everything. So you put in like, if you're especially careful, like Jeremy, you can play sound, you can make music with it. And so that's the maybe the, the start of it. And the, I mean, but. I don't know in general. I, I really like the, the, the video feedback. I got deep into that in some ways, but uh, apart from that, I don't think that I. Uh, I would just thank you for Okay, I'm sorry. I